to the channel where we discuss medical topics and lifestyle. In today's video, we are talking about vitamin C a little bit and the food sources of vitamin C. So let's get into it. Vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid and it has various important functions and it's very important in our bodies. One of the deficiencies of vitamin C is something called scurvy. Scurvy, or otherwise known as severe vitamin C deficiency, is rare, as most people get enough vitamin C in their diets, and it's quite easy to treat. But scurvy is caused by not having enough vitamin C in your diet for at least three months. Vitamin C, mainly found in fruits and vegetables, we'll get into that in a moment, but even people who do not eat very healthily all the time are not usually considered at risk of scurvy because it's so severe. Now, scurvy is not so common nowadays. I mean, it was attributed more as a disease of the past. So it used to happen in ancient sailors who travel long periods of time, not be exposed to any healthy diets and things like that. Primarily more, maybe you can think of refugees as a good example nowadays. So long distances, no good, adequate diets. And who didn't have good diets and things like that used to get exposed to it. Now it's associated with malabsorption, for example. And um it can be very severe. It can cause weakness, fatigue, gum disease, changes to the hair, and ultimately death from bleeding and infection. What's important to know is that if you are feeling like you have some mild symptoms of this, not something dramatic like scurvy, but if you're feeling very tired and weak all the time, irritable, sad, have a bit of gum issues, develop red or blue spots on the skins, usually on the, on the, on the shin, if you have symptoms like this, then maybe chat to, your, chat to your GP, chat to your family physician, maybe get a blood test and check these things out. All right, so we talked about what happens if you really have a lack of vitamin C, something so dramatic such as scurvy. So why is it actually important? So vitamin C, also known as ascorbic acid, it's a water-soluble nutrient. So it's very important to note this. I mean, you have fat-soluble nutrients and water-soluble nutrients. Fat-soluble nutrients are A, D, E, and K. The rest of them are water-soluble. And uh, it's important. It's required for protein metabolism, immune function, wound healing, gene expression, collagen production. So vitamin C, super important in our bodies. It can help to protect cells and keep them healthy. It can maintain healthy bones, healthy blood vessels, cartilage as well. So very important vitamin. And it's also important to note that it's an antioxidant and it participates in many chemical reactions in the body. Another thing to note here is that vitamin C is heat sensitive. So what this means is that where the vitamin C comes from, which is mainly going to be fruits and vegetables, but we'll talk about that in a second, you have to eat them raw or lightly steam them because vitamin C is heat sensitive. So now the risk factors of having vitamin C deficiency, so it can be diet related, so not eating any raw fruits or vegetables. It can be malnutrition related, so there can be alcoholism, there can be mental disorders, there can be absorption issues, and there can be homelessness. So anything that disrupts the pa normal pattern of eating in a normal diet essentially can put you at risk of having a lack of vitamin C. So up until this point, we've talked about a lack of vitamin C and why it's, it's important. Now, So now let's talk about how much vitamin C we actually need and what happens when we have too much of it. So what are the dietary recommendations? So the recommended dietary allowances for vitamin C are as follows. So you split the categories up into female and male, obviously. So females above the age of 19 need about 75 milligrams per day. Males 19 plus need about 90 milligrams per day. If you're pregnant, you need a little bit more than a female. If you're lactating, you definitely need a little bit more. And it's also very interesting to note that those who smoke, so smokers need on average 35 milligrams more vitamin C per day compared to non-smokers. So if it isn't already obvious in today's day and age to not smoke, here's another example of why you shouldn't smoke. Now, what happens when we have too much vitamin C. So those are the dietary recommendations. What happens when we have too much vitamin C? So if, let's say we're taking loads of it. Let's say we're taking more than a thousand milligrams per day. So way beyond what the recommendations are. It's going to be mainly GI related. So you're going to get diarrhea, you're going to get flatulence, you're going to get stomach pains. So these are the things that are going to happen mainly if you're taking way too much vitamin C on board. So let's stick roughly to the dietary requirements. You really should be getting all your vitamin C you need from your daily diet. So vitamin C, it can't be stored in the body. So you need it in your diet every single day. Now let's talk about some food sources of vitamin C. And a tip on the food sources, it's all going to be raw and it's all going to be fruits and vegetables. So at the bottom of our list is cauliflower. So half a cup of cauliflower can give about 26 milligrams of vitamin C. So plenty of it. Then we talk about tomato juice. So tomato juice, three, uh, three quarters of a cup. 33 milligrams of vitamin C. Then we talk about grapefruit. Grapefruit, about half of a medium-sized grapefruit raw, again, 
is about 44 milligrams of vitamin C. And then we come to everybody's favorite vegetable, which is broccoli. So about half a cup of raw broccoli can give about 50 milligrams of vitamin C. There are other things like cantaloupe. So half a cup of cantaloupe can give about 30 milligrams. You can have Brussels sprouts as well. Half a cup of cooked Brussels sprouts can give about 45 milligrams. And then we move on to the heavy hitters of vitamin C. So more potent food sources of vitamin C. And first we have the citrusy kind of fruit. So we have kiwi. So one medium kiwi is about 65 milligrams of vitamin C. So we're hitting that daily dietary requirement of vitamin C. And then we have oranges. So orange, one medium sized orange can give about 70 milligrams of vitamin C. So really good source of vitamin C, the citrus hue. And then we have strawberries. So strawberries, one cup of strawberries can give 85 milligrams of vitamin C. So huge, huge source of vitamin C. And then finally, the winner of our food source list here in this video is the red sweet pepper. So half a cup of raw red sweet pepper is around 95 milligrams of vitamin C. So they are the winner of the food sources. I don't know if it's a food source that has more. Maybe you guys do. Leave a comment in the section below to let us know. That's it for this video. Hope you learned something about vitamin C, why it's so important, what happens when you really, really don't have enough of it, what happens when you have a little bit too much, and what good food sources of them are. Like, leave a comment, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next video.